I'm in Joshua chapter 3. We're going to look at the totality of the, the chapter. And what I'm going to do is I want to use this passage tonight as a prophetic canvas to start painting our way or painting the message or the picture that I believe that, that God is speaking to us. And Joshua rose early in the morning and he set out from Acacia Grove and he came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they crossed over. And so it was after three days that the officers went through the camp and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from the place, from your place, and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. I love how that is worded right there, and I want you to grab hold of it. If you're taking notes, you want to highlight that tonight. For you have not passed this way before. Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And then Joshua spoke to the priest saying, take up the ark of the covenant and cross over before the people. And so they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said to Joshua, this day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Is that powerful? Wow, I feel that. And you shall command the priest who bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you have come to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. And so Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you. Can I read that again? Excellent. Three of you just gave me that. Amen. I'm going to. By this you shall know the living God is among you. <sighs> and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, and the Gershites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites, and hopefully the Parasites. <laughs> Glory to God. That was a prophetic word for somebody. I think it was those online. Excuse me. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth is crossing over before you into the Jordan. My God. Come on. My God. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth is crossing over before you. Into the Jordan. Now, therefore, take for yourselves 12 men of the tribes of Israel, one man of every tribe. And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of their feet of the priest who bear the ark of the Lord. Oh, here it is. The Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan. Did you catch those words? Did you, did you just feel the weightiness of those words? The Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan. He's the Lord of the breakthrough. He's the way maker. I'm going to write a song. He's the way maker. <laughs> and, the, and the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off. And the waters that come down from upstream, and they shall stand up in a heap. And so it was... When the people set out from the camp to cross over the Jordan with the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, as those who bore the Ark came to the Jordan and the feet of the priest who bore the Ark dipped in the edge of the water, for the Jordan overflows all its banks during the whole time of harvest. So I want you to notice that it's at flood stage. It is overflowing its banks. You need to see this tonight. It's at flood stage, overflowing its banks, that the waters which came down from the upstream stood still and rose in a heap very far from Adam. 
the city beside Zaratan. And so the waters that went into the sea of Arabah and the salt sea failed and were cut off, and the people crossed over opposite Jericho. Then the priest who bore the Ark of the Covenant stood firm on dry ground. Where? In the midst of the Jordan. And all of Israel crossed over on dry ground until all the people had crossed completely over the Jordan. You talk about an epic defining moment of our history and our story. Now, lest you think that we are romanticizing history when we read the Old Covenant, we are reading our family story. You have to put yourself tonight in the story. I want to give you a scripture tonight, and it's found in Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Put it in your notes tonight. What we do is we are not reviewing history. We are looking at this to gain spiritual understanding by the Holy Spirit. So Paul writes these words. He says, whatever things were written before were written for your learning. Are you with me? Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? Okay. Okay. I I don't take time to look what's behind me. I got to have you talk to me so I know it's behind me. For whatever things were written before you were written for our learning that through the patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Can we read it one more time? For whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. I want to set that in place tonight because our God is the God of all hope. These times are very challenging, but our God is the God of all hope, and He is the God that goes before us. Glory to God. I said He's the God that goes before us. Joshua chapter 1 in verse 5, God gives an epic promise to him, and He says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. And as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. It's a powerful, powerful promise. And we all understand that God was overwhelmingly with Moses by his presence. We all acknowledge and recognize that God was overwhelmingly with Moses through the access of his glory. There was something about God's friendship with Moses that he was willing to give him access into the realms of the glory of God to experience him. The, the scripture even says of Moses that he encountered the Lord literally face to face as a friend does with a, with a friend. That's powerful, powerful access. And so he tells Joshua, imagine him, you, you receiving this word like Joshua. I will be with you just as I was with Moses. I will never leave you nor forsake you. No man's going to be able to stand before you all the days of your life. And so through friendship and through trust, Moses began to develop this relationship with God, that God was willing to share his presence and his glory with Moses. And now Moses is gone. And he says, just the way that you've seen me be in times past with Moses, I'm going to share my glory with you in that level and that realm. Can you imagine how that caused Joshua to stand up straight? Are you with me? And then in Joshua 1.9, just a few verses later, he says, have I not commanded you? Notice he didn't say, I'm suggesting this. He says, I'm commanding you, be strong and of good courage, and do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This is a word for us right now in 2023, ladies and gentlemen. God is commanding his ecclesia. God is commanding his sons and daughters. You must take courage. You must take, you must take courage now. Do not be discouraged. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you 
wherever you go. You need to confess and remind yourself every day of your life, God goes before me, God is with me, God is in me, He is making the way, He is going before me and breaking through for me. Come on! Now, a first obvious point, huge point tonight we find in Joshua 3, verse 3 and 4, and I want to read it again tonight. The command the people say when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priest and the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and you shall go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it that you may know the way which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. I want to lay some things just right out of the text here, and that's the precedent of honoring the presence of God. That's where we start. It's the precedent of acknowledging and honoring the presence and the glory of God. It was about honoring the holiness of God that was leading them now into their promised land. It was about recognizing that God was amongst them, he was with them, then he was going before them. God goes before us. I want you to de declare that tonight over your life. God goes before me. Now I want you to say it with some faith back in it. I want you to say it again. All right, you men, I want you to say it. That's right. I felt you on that one. God goes before us. He's with us. His presence goes before us. You are never left alone. Wherever the, your feet will trod, the Lord is there. The Lord is going before you. And so in the ark, we see the obvious. We see the glory. In the ark, we see the presence. And the ark there of the mercy seat where the cherubim angels were on the top of the ark resting where the glory of God sat. It was truly the throne of the Lord in the old covenant. It was the throne of the Lord on earth as it is in heaven. And the presence of the Lord and the glory goes before us. We follow the lead of the presence. We're going to move into the new, new covenant in a minute, but just listen to the language tonight. The glory of the Lord leads us. The glory of the Lord goes before us, and we follow His lead. The presence of the Lord is what actually leads us into the journey of the unknown. The presence of the Lord leads us into places experientially that we have not tasted of yet. How many of you are fully convinced that the Lord knows the way into the coming weeks, months, and years for the church globally? How many of you also believe that God is so excited to lead His ecclesia triumphantly? Come on, church! That's what He does. And so we know that Jesus is our good shepherd. We know that he must take the lead. And we must trust his voice. We must trust his presence. Several months ago, I remember my wife saying, we deliberately linger here at victory and worship so that we're more acquainted with the glory of the Lord. So that when we're out in places of life, the tangible glory of the Lord will begin to lead and direct our steps. It's so important what we're doing here, deliberately lingering in learning the presence of the Lord. There's an art to it. There's an art of waiting. There's an art to lingering. There's a secret to it. And as you tap into the glory, as you tap into the presence, you can begin to be directed and redirected by the presence of God. Can I get a witness? And so you have to begin to trust His presence and trust His voice. In Proverbs 3, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, very, very familiar passage maybe to most of us. But it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding. Grab a hold of that, your own understanding. I want to key in on that tonight. But in all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct, say it, your path. 
We need spiritual understanding. Where, where we are going in the coming weeks and months, years ahead as the body of Christ, we, we need spiritual understanding. We need divine intelligence from the Holy Spirit. God knows the future. You're sitting with a future book in your lap right now. He knows the way. He is the way. He knows. He's written all of this in advance for us, not that we would be scared, but that we would be prepared for the hour to know our God is going before us, and He is the God of victory. He's the God of triumph. Hallelujah! He's the God that when everything is overflowing its banks, He steps into the water, and He cuts a path, and He makes a way for his beloved. He makes the way for his chosen. He's awesome. But you have to learn to trust and follow his presence. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9, it says that we do not cease to pray for you, but to ask that you may be filled, filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, spiritual understanding, so that you'll walk worthy, fully pleasing to God, being fruitful for every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. We are, we are a spirit-filled tribe. Can I get a witness? We are a spirit-filled people. We are a spirit-filled tribe. We make no apologies about being spirit-filled people at Victory. Can I get a witness? In Jude 1.20, it says that when you pray in the Spirit, when you pray in the Spirit, you are building up your inner man. You are actually building up your faith. When you pray in the Spirit, day and night and every day, you are building up your faith. You're building up your communion with the Holy Spirit. You're building yourself. You're building faith. You're building vision. You're building momentum. It's a spiritual communication with the Holy Ghost. And it has to happen daily. When we do it, when we pray in the Spirit, when we commune with the Spirit, He will show us and open the pathway to life. If there was ever an hour that we need divine revelation, spiritual understanding, this is the hour. And I will say discernment as well. Now, I cannot underscore this point enough tonight in 2023. We as the global church, we have not passed this way before. This is an hour that is not business as usual. This is an hour that we cannot be casual. This is not an hour that we can be in cruise control right now. I'll wait for the amens tonight. <laughs> you cannot be business as usual, ladies and gentlemen. This is a hour where we must be led by the Spirit of God, be led by the voice of God, heeding ourselves to the Word of the Lord. And I want to tell you, I believe that our very lives will depend upon this. We are going into territory, ladies and gentlemen. We're going away that we have never, ever been before. We are about to see things on planet Earth we have never yet seen before. We are about to see things in the nations of the Earth we have not yet seen. We are about to see things, let's bring it on home, in the United States of America we have not yet ever seen before. This is a very sobering hour. And in verse 5, he gives this word. Joshua says to the people, he says, sanctify yourselves. This is a defining moment. Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Sanctify. It means what? It means to separate yourself unto the Lord. If, if I'm going to sanctify myself 
to the Lord. It's saying that I'm going to be consecrated unto Him. I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to get low. For, for them, it was the ceremonial washing and cleansing to make sure there, there wasn't anything grievous or harmful in their life to the Lord. It was a renouncing of sin. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, put it in your notes. It says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our, our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You need to shout a huge amen right there. If we confess our sins, he's the one who is faithful. He's the one who is just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And i got to say tonight, God is the one who exceeds in forgiving sin. He loves to set what went wrong right. He loves communion with his sons and daughters. He doesn't want anything between the intimacy and the sweetness and the communion between you as a son and your father or you as a daughter to your heavenly father. He wants it removed out of the way it, that if you would just confess, what does it say? Then he's the one who's faithful and just and forgives us of our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Why am I amplifying this point. I'm saying Joshua said you must sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourselves. It means to keep short accounts with God. Keep short accounts with the blood of Jesus. You want to make sure that there's nothing in your life right now my friends that's grieving to the Lord. Are you with me tonight? You want to make sure that there's nothing in your life. You want to make sure there's nothing in your home. You want to make sure that there's nothing on your property that is grieving or offensive that would quench the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? And all you have to do is ask the Lord. You don't need to call Pastor Brian. Can you do another tour of the property? Can you walk the property again, Brian? Ask the Lord, and he will show you. He'll take you right to the place. <laughs> so Thursday night, we, of course, we're entering into the fast right now, and we're entering into a, a, a time of sanctification. The fast is setting us apart to be holy unto the Lord. We're setting ourselves apart to consecrate ourselves afresh in this springtime unto the Lord. And I just got to ask, how many of you like how we are doing our fast throughout the year? That's what I thought. And we used to do, you know, 21 days up front every January. But my gosh, when we started spreading out the fast, uh, man, I got a lot of thank you cards. <laughs> so, oh, geez. But it's been wonderful that quarterly as we've been spreading this out that we come back to this place again. What is it? It's keeping short accounts with God. It's getting well acquainted with the blood again. It's us getting consecrated again. It, it's us making sure we're looking circumspectively that we're walking a life that is holy and pleasing unto the Lord. So on Thursday night of this week, we're, we're going to be back out on the ocean again, finishing our resurrection baptisms. Yeah. Amen. But on Friday night, here at the church, through prayer, we're also going to be having a burn. And this is a time where, where anything the Holy Spirit identifies to you in your life, in sanctifying yourself, anything in your home. Let me give you some examples. Any books that the Holy Spirit's going to highlight to you. Any novels. Any music. Any art. Any jewelry, charms. Anything that may be occultic in your house or demonic. Ask the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit. Again, let me go over them again. There, there could be books. There could be novels. There could be music. There could be art. There could be jewelry, charms, anything occult, occultic or demonic. Ask the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 19, I want you to see something. Paul is in the city of Ephesus, and he's dealing strong with the demonic and witchcraft and sorcery, big time. It's a confrontation 
as the Spirit of God, as the kingdom of God is coming through their ministry. And there in chapter 19 it says, also many of those who practice magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of them all, and they counted up the value of them, which totaled 50,000 pieces of silver, and the way of the Lord spread in power. I believe, I believe Friday could be a very, very defining moment of cleansing and sanctification, sanctifying yourself unto the Lord. Some dear people in our lives just several months ago, I got a call early in the morning, and I remember, and he said, Brian, can I come over to your house and, and go to your, your burn pile and burn some stuff? The Lord has spoken to me and identified, I've got to get rid of these things in my house. I don't even listen to them. I've had them forever. Can I bring them over to your house and burn them? It was a great way to start the morning. And so we were out that morning, and I love a good bonfire, and so, man, I fired it up, and uh, we had a time. I believe this Friday is going to be very, very significant. And listen, I want you to hear this because the Holy Spirit, he's going to remind you. Ask the Holy Spirit what's on your property and in your house, if there's anything grieving and offensive to him, and then it's time to get rid of it. It's time for the house to be clean. I said it's time for the house to be clean. Of course, Bren will remember this. This was my wife and I were newly married in 1995, but in 96 in our youth ministry in Ohio, God was, God was moving in a very extreme, powerful way within the youth ministry. And the, the young people were coming under intense conviction of sin. And Brent and I were telling the young people, listen, I want you, if there's any, first, first of all, you start in your room. If there's anything in your room that could be grieving to the Holy Spirit, I want you to ask him to identify it to you. And then I want you to go through your house and ask the Lord. And boy, did they. And I remember young men bringing in their mother's Victoria's Secret magazines and far worse. I remember them bringing in demonic worship and demonic music. I remember them, uh, girls bringing in occult magazines, books on witchcraft. Uh, I remember young women bringing in their mom's uh, romance sexual novels for burning. And what I found, what Brent and I found was that Brent and I came under a very strong attack from Christian parents. Because Brent and I were told that it was none of our business what goes on in their home and to stay out. Their kids were burning on fire. Their, their kids were burning on fire for God. Their, their kids were burning with holiness. Their kids were burning with conviction. Their kids were out on the floor. Their kids were having to be carried out of the room over their shoulders like cavemen. And yet when it came time to cleansing the house and the atmosphere of the home, they became offended and told us it's none of your business what goes on in our house. And who are you to tell us? So I want to say as I said then and I'll say it tonight, it's time to have your heart clean. And it's time to have your house clean. Go ahead and give the Lord praise tonight. Come on. This fasting time for us this week is very key. And it is key for separating ourselves unto the Lord. It is key for getting low. It is key for consecration. It is key for being set apart. And we have to say this over and over. It's so important. It's key for us to set ourselves apart and dig into the Word, to get all the distractions out of the way. All of the, I think we sang the clutter. Didn't we sing the, cl the clutter song? The clutter song, the famous clutter song. I have no idea what it is, but I love it. I love it, the clutter. But I also believe it's very important for this fast that we ask for the strategies ahead for our lives and for our families. We need wisdom right now as a ministry. And in fact, the church globally really needs to be stood at attention by the Spirit of God 
of where we are heading into the future, even in the coming days and weeks. And I think every one of us are very aware that we, we could be in war before this weekend is out. We are at the most sobering, sobering tipping point right now, ladies and gentlemen. Things are shifting. The whole world is hanging in balance right now. I know this is not news to you. I'm not going to go long on these points. I just want to simply make these points. Many of us are seeing the alliances that China and Russia are doing right now with many, many nations. It is stunning. How many would say it is stunning? I think of India. I think of Brazil. I think of Iran, of Qatar, of Saudi Arabia, of Syria, of South Africa. I think of all these different different alliances that are happening right before our very eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, they are leaving America in the dust. They are leaving America completely out of the conversation, and now brand new global alliances are being made. Things are dramatically shifting. We have never seen a day like this, and I believe it is the scenario that is setting everything up for these last days, for the epic return of the Lord. There's alliances in the nations that are leaving the American dollar standard for new currencies. It has all of us standing at attention. You guys send me the articles constantly. <laughs> so I trust that you know what I'm talking about. But then there's something very bizarre that's going on in, in our nation too. And that's all of the purposeful sabotaging of destruction and overturning everywhere. I woke up uh, Thursday, it was, yeah, Thursday, to this radical story of 18,000 dairy cows being killed because of an explosion in Texas. How many of you saw that? Oh, wow, yeah, a lot of you. And then only one person injured. Isn't that bizarre? I mean, really, is, is that bizarre? We've never heard of anything like this before. It's like, it's like egg farms being destroyed right now. It's like chicken farms being destroyed right now. It's like cattle farms being destroyed right now. Dairy farms destroyed or contaminated. Now more than 30 major food distribution plants and processing plants have been burnt to the ground in less than 12 months. Are, are you asking what's going on? I am. I'm asking the real questions. And every day it seems like another unprecedented event happens. You wake up and something else has happened. If we keep going with it tonight, we could talk, and I'm not going to go long on this. We could talk about the trains of toxic chemicals and destruction coming off the rails, contamination of America all over from coast to coast. I'm amazed by it. But I feel, <clears throat> I feel like we are, we are building in a momentum that's going to lead folks to a standstill moment and a crescendo. I see it in my dreams. I hear it in the conversations with the Lord. Folks, we're coming to a day where we're about to see things we never dreamed that we would see. And you're going to have to be well, well, well acquainted with the glory of the Lord and the presence of God to lead you in the coming hour. In 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32, it's an interesting time. And I want to set the stage for it. It's an interesting time because this is when the tribes were making their allegiances and their, their own allegiances and their own alliances. And they were choosing who they were going to be loyal to, if they were going to be loyal to David or if they were going to be loyal to Saul. And it says that King David had these men. They were called the sons of Issachar, and we, of course, we know Issachar was one of the 12 sons, which eventually became the 12 tribes of Israel. And so these sons of Issachar, they were trained, they were skilled in 
understanding the times to know what Israel ought to do. And this is what our prayer should be right now. Lord, teach us by your word and by your spirit to understand the times that we are engaging in. That should be your prayer. Lord, teach me. Give me spiritual understanding so that I am able to discern the time that me and my family and the body of Christ are in right now. And then, Lord, show me practically what I am supposed to do. This is how I'm asking you to pray even throughout this fast. We need a fresh strategy from the Lord. And I... I, I have been that man, I have been that shepherd or leader or friend in your life telling you to prepare, telling you to get your food and your water and your ammunition and your medical supplies ready and to be prepared in your storehouses. I'm not embarrassed about it. Doesn't bother me one bit when people laugh, laugh me to scorn or whatever. This is a time where we have to strategically hear from the Holy Spirit. And He's wanting to talk to us in these practical areas on how to get ready. How to get ready financially. How to get your house in order. How to get your house ready for where we are going. We are about to see stuff, ladies and gentlemen. And I say, God, lead us by your voice. I say, God, lead us by your glory. I say, God, lead us by your presence. Lead us by your presence. God, show us what time it is in the world. Lord, that not, that, Lord, that not one person in this family would be overcome with spiritual dullness, but they would be so sharp, so locked in, so walking in sync and in rhythm with the Holy Spirit, and their ears are open. Their ears are inclined to hear you, God. Their eyes are open to discern the hour. And Lord, that they can hear you speaking practically. Son, do this. Move this. Change this. Hallelujah. As long as we are here on planet earth, the church is called to restrain evil. As long as we're here in the earth, we are called to fight wickedness. Can I get a witness in here? But we're also to be raising the banner of righteousness. Here's what I want to give to you tonight. The glory of God will cut through and pierce through the darkness of this night that we are facing. And it will lead us into our ultimate promised land. And I, I want to grab a hold of you when I say this because we lose sight of this so much in the church about our ultimate promised land that God has had a dream of preparation for his church from all the ends of the ages that he will gather unto himself before his throne. He's been preparing a place for us. And he's been preparing a place for all those who are looking for him and who love his appearing. He is preparing a place for all those who have that Maranatha cry deep in their spirit that is crying out saying, come Lord Jesus. The spirit and the bride say, come Lord Jesus. The spirit, the spirit and the bride say, come, say, come Lord Jesus. And Jesus gave us this promise in John 14. In beginning in verse 1, he says, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare this place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to look at you and tell you, this promise is still true, and our king is coming. He's coming. And without a doubt, we're living in the last days, and we are racing towards the epic crescendo of time. A biblical great tribulation is about to come on the world. A great Biblical tribulation is about to come on this earth. 
You can read about it. Daniel 9, Matthew 24, Luke 21, Revelation, the seals, the trumpets, the bowls of Revelation. But the ultimate judgment and wrath of God coming upon sin and wickedness and leading to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, where are we going with this? Because our relationship with the Holy Spirit right now is most vital. And it's a time that we must discern accurately what is going on in the earth. The sons of Issachar, they knew how to prepare. They were listening. They were watching. They were listening. They were watching. The sons of Issachar, they understood the times. It's no secret you're running into a lot of Christians that have no clue what time it is. Attend some of these silly, silly, fluffy little churches that have no clue what time it is for the ages. They're still burying their head in the sand to where we are really at in this hour. And time is ticking away. It's most vital that we key in on our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Bill Johnson taught us something years ago. It may have been about 20 years ago, and I'll never forget it. And I want you to write it down tonight. He said, Jesus did not live in, in reaction to what the devil was doing, but he lived in, t- in response to what the Father was doing. Jesus did not live in reaction to what the devil was doing, but he lived in response in response to what the Father was doing. Now, we've got Bible for that. This is John chapter 5 and verse 19. Stay with me a few more moments. Are you still with me? Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son cannot do anything of himself, but but, but what he sees the Father do, for whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. Jesus' life and ministry was in response to relationship with his Father. And I tell you tonight, that is the pattern for all life and all ministry. He had intimacy with his Father. He had personal quality time with his Father as he walked the earth. He did this as a man, ladies and gentlemen. He didn't do this as God. He did this as man. A man that was completely surrendered, a son that was completely surrendered by God through intimacy, through fellowship with God. And he could watch what his father was doing and he would only join in the activity of what his father was doing. And he would manifest it. And I can give you language for it. It would be on earth as it is in heaven. Whatever he saw his father doing, that's what he had authorization to do. In John chapter 14, in verse 17, it says, The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Wow. Because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Romans 8, 14, it says, For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. John chapter 15, verse 26, stay with me. But when the Helper comes, the Holy Spirit, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. John chapter 16, verse 13. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. Watch this. He will not, he, uh, and he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things that are to come. He's going to show you things that are to come. Because God has made you the very ark of his glory, because he has set the ark of his presence within you, because he has made you the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit as you're abiding in him and you're praying in the Spirit each day, you're abiding in the Lord, you're abiding in the Word, you're building up yourself in your most holy faith, you're praying in the Spirit, the the Spirit of truth is going to begin to open your eyes to another playing field, another dimension, you're going to see on a high places, a higher dimension, a higher level. And you're going to know what's going on. We got Bible for it. It's called spiritual understanding. Spiritual intelligence from the Holy Spirit will begin to drop into you. And you're going to know what to do. You're going to understand it. You're going to discern it. 
you're going to perceive it, but then God's going to say, now I'm going to show you what to do with that wisdom I've given you, with the understanding I've given you. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4, glory to God. Here's some victory for you. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. The Spirit of God that is within you will lead you. He's greater than that enemy. He's greater than the devil. He's greater than the fallen one. And the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives and dwells within you. How are you going to make it in these last days? How are you going to cut through the darkness? Because the illumination of the Holy Ghost within you and the Word of God living and breathing on the inside of you. Jesus says, my Word, it is Spirit, and my Word, it is life. The the Spirit and the life of the Word of God will be brewing in you, leading you, directing your course. You can be led by the Spirit. But you've got to let the glory and the presence go before you. You got to let the glory and the presence, the, the God who goes before you, He will go before you if you will follow, if you will listen, if you will abide. Back to the front of this train, and now I'm in Joshua 3 again. You never thought I'd make it back. He said, He commanded the people when you see the ark of the covenant. And the Lord your God and the priests and the Levites bearing it, you shall set out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. Before. The Lord knows what is to come on planet Earth. The Lord knows the wars, the real wars that are about to be loosed in the world. He knows. He knows the mega inflations that we're going to experience. He knows the famines. We say it like this, food shortages that are going to become very real. He knows the pestilence. He knows the medical chaos. He knows the crisis. But his presence in us and upon us will cut through the night and he will lead us to the other side. Do you believe that? Are you convinced of it? I am too. Noah. We're going to look at two more scriptures tonight. Noah was a man that feared and worshiped God. The scripture tells us that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. That's 2 Peter 2, I think it's verse 5. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He, he walked with God. He knew God. But interesting, listen to the language that I wrote down tonight. Noah was given an assignment to prepare an ark of refuge. He was given an assignment to prepare an, an ark of refuge. And it made no logical sense. It made no reasonable sense in a time of great violence in the earth, sexual immorality, wickedness, and God brought a flood upon the ungodly. This is what Jesus says. Jesus marked something for us prophetically. He was prophesying so that we would know what we should be looking for. You know these words tonight, Matthew 24 Verses 37 and 39, but as in the days of Noah, or as the days of Noah were, so also it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not know until the flood came and took them away. Listen to Jesus' words. So it will also be at the coming of the Son of Man. People will be going about life casually, the same old, marrying, drinking, eating, carousing, doing their thing. But notice that Noah had an assignment from God to prepare an ark of refuge. 
I believe in these last days, the people of God are going to hear strategy, plans from the Lord to create a place of refuge. As long as we're in the earth, we're going to keep fighting against evil. As long as we are in the earth, we are going to continue to restrain wickedness. But the Lord is also calling us to prepare a place of refuge. That's what God is building in this community that is called Victory, a church of his presence. That we would be a place of spiritual and natural and emotional and physical refuge to people. That they would walk into a place of the glory and the presence of God and be healed and be delivered and be set free. Even in a time of upheaval and chaos, God's going to keep us steady, guys, in the storm. God's going to keep you anchored in the storm. And you're going to still be able to minister to others. You're not going to lose your spiritual equilibrium when you see what is coming upon the earth. You're going to stand fast and stand strong in your faith, and he's going to make you a place of refuge. Come on. Luke 21, and we're about there. Jesus gave us a few things to see. Luke 21, in verse 25, he said, And there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and on the earth the stress of nations with perplexities, and the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them from fear of the expectation of those things that are coming upon the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the Son of Man coming, he will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of power and great glory. Now when you see these things begin to happen, look up. Lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. You have a Maranatha in your cry? Verse 36, watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Things are at flood stage right now. Everything is overflowing its banks. But the glory of God is going before his people and he's setting his presence into the midst and he is cutting the pathway open for us to cross over to the other side. This is still an hour of victory. This is still an hour of triumph. Hallelujah. Put your Bibles aside tonight. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Cody, would you come? Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you that you prepare your sons and daughters. You, you prepare your church. And Lord, in this time that we are setting apart in this week, that we would be sharpened. We would be sharpened by the Holy Ghost, that every place of spiritual dullness would be removed, that our eyes would be freshly anointed, our ears would be freshly anointed to hear you, our heart would be opened, Lord. The doors and the windows of our heart will be completely opened, Lord, to revelation, that you would give us spiritual understanding, Lord. That you would speak to us about even that which is yet to come. I pray, Lord, that you would breathe upon victory in the prophetic realm. And you would begin to show us things that are coming so that we can prepare and be ready for all the resources, the tools, the strategy, and the power to overcome. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are our good shepherd. You lead the way. 
and we follow you. You are the glorious one. And Lord, that we will not trust in our own understanding, but we will trust in you in this hour completely. Lord, you direct our path. Lord, the torch of your presence is cutting through the night, even now, even now. Lord, I want to thank you that we are in the earth for this hour and this time. I want to thank you that you have chosen us, you have elected us to be in the earth as we are racing to the end of this age and the coming of the Son of God in great power and great glory. Wow. I thank you that we are here for such a time as this, Lord. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Spirit of revelation, rest on us. Spirit of wisdom, rest on us. Spirit of understanding. Spirit of knowledge, rest on us. Spirit of counsel. Spirit of might. And the fear of the Lord, rest on us. Speak to us, Lord. Direct our course. Direct our steps and our path. I specifically want to ask you, Lord, tonight, once again, for your divine covering and your divine protection and your shield from coast to coast over the United States of America right now. Thank you for your mighty, holy, warring angels. Keep us, Lord. Keep us in your grace and keep us in your mercy. Watch over this beloved nation, Lord, and be like a wall of fire about us. And your glory in the midst of us, Lord. For you are still mighty to save and mighty to deliver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen going to transition tonight to a few things. We're going to give some announcements. We're going to receive our offering. Can I have our ushers come at this time? If you would like to receive an offering envelope for your giving tonight, lift your hand high. We want to have our ushers come to serve you. You can open your app right now. You can give tonight. You can give online. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Just lift your hand high to be served. Good. Good job, guys. Thank you for your faithfulness of giving tonight. Honey, I want you to come. Let's give some announcements. We'll receive the offering. Then I'm going to set something else up. I just want to make you aware of a couple things. Uh, first of all, if you, many of you have asked, where do you get that music that you guys all play? And you've asked a lot of, about different uh, worship songs and that. Well, we wanted to let you know that on our app, if you go to our app and you hit the media tab, and then there's a worship tab, and then there's a suggested worship tab that is has a list that Cody made up 
for for uh, for you and for us so that you can go there and kind of get a playlist of of songs that we we worship to in the house and that we think that you would really um, be blessed by so we just wanted to make you aware of that um because we do get a lot of that questions asked about that and um, wanted to make you aware that that is on our app for you um also, there's a new class that's going to be coming up the first uh, weekend in June, and this is going to be Financial Peace University. And many of you know that it's Dave Ramsey's ministry and business. So we are going to be teaching classes. We're going to do five classes in the spring, kind of summer, going into summer. It's still spring though, and then five classes in the or four classes in the fall. So our first five classes are going to start on Saturday, June 3rd from 3 to 4 p.m. Michael Conway is going to be teaching that class. So um, for more information, you can um, register. Registration will be open soon, but we just wanted to kind of get the word out to you. June 3rd is going to be the first weekend. It will be every Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. on Saturday. So just want to make you aware of that. And then, again, just want to... Uh, remind you of the fast this week. We are meeting nightly at 6.30 p.m. from 6.30 to 8 p.m. every night. Uh, Sunday through Wednesday, we are going to be meeting over in the Family Life Center, and then we're going to be mixing it up a little bit. Thursday night, we are doing the rest of our baptisms back out at Ken Thompson Park at 6.30 from 6.30 to 8 before the sun goes down, and it's going to be a wonderful time. We are going to have some worship out there and pray as well, So um, and just incorporate the baptism into that. So we invite you to come out. It's going to be a wonderful time. A lot of the people who were going to get baptized, we had mentioned we were going to do it tonight, um, but a lot of them was like, we want to do it outside. We want to do it on the water um, out there, and so... So we were like, let's do it. So, so we're going to do that this Thursday. And then Friday, we will be back here in the Family Life Center, but also out in the courtyard area doing the bonfire. So just encouraging you that this week as you are fasting, whatever the Lord has placed on your heart to fast and consecrate yourself unto him, just ask the Lord if there's anything that you need to get rid of, get out of your home, get out of your life that you want to bring here Friday night, and we're going to have a, a great bonfire. So it's going to be wonderful. All right. Amen. Are you ready to give? Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity tonight to sow for the advancement of your kingdom. And Lord, I pray the prosperity of heaven upon your sons and daughters. There will be no lack in their house. There will be abundance. There will be fruitfulness and breakthrough. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen.